Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Good Orderly Direction, Practical Tools of the Bible. I'm your host, Dr. Donnelly Snipes. Today, we're discussing the Beatitudes from Matthew chapter 5. A lot of people have heard of the Beatitudes or they've heard the Beatitudes, but they walk away scratching their head or it doesn't really sink in because it doesn't seem to be practical. But in reality, it is. And remember that Matthew was written um, and geared toward the Israelites to help them convert, if you will, to help them understand who Jesus was. And Jesus said he spoke in parables because only the people with open minds, like children, would understand. So people who were trying to, you know, do too much overthinking of it um, might have more difficulty. So, you know, using that, you may understand why some of the passages are a little bit more difficult to discern. Uh, but in any event, let's go through the Beatitudes and see what they actually say. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What does that mean? Well, the poor in spirit are people who are humble, people who recognize that they need the education of God. They need to learn good orderly direction. They can't do it all on their own. They need other people. When they recognize that, then they start following good orderly direction and creating the kingdom of heaven. They start taking on those behaviors that eventually will help them ascend to heaven if you believe that you're going to heaven. So that's important. Blessed are the, those who mourn or the grieving person. They will be comforted. How is somebody who's in mourning um, blessed, you may think? But what this is saying is by understanding God's teachings, by understanding what happens when we die, by understanding the uh, big picture, people can be comforted even in their grief. It doesn't make the grief go away, but it helps them believe or feel like their loved one is not suffering anymore. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. At this point, you know, before Jesus kind of really came on the scene, the Israelites had taken some of the rules, some of the laws, and expanded them in the wrong direction. And it had become kind of the wild, wild west. And they had become a very aggressive, um, angry, and somewhat murderous group. What this is saying is the meek, the people who are not just ready to jump and fight all the time, will inherit the earth because they can hear. They're meek. They hear what's going on. And instead of going into fight or flight, they can more easily get into their wise mind and figure out what is the next right thing. They're not about aggression. They're about compassion and assertiveness. Blessed are the seekers of righteousness. They will be filled. And this talks about, it actually says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. But what we're talking about here is people who are trying to figure out what is right and how can I do better? How can I be better tomorrow than I was today or better today than I was yesterday? And when we do that, when we are behaving righteously, other people who are also behaving righteously are gravitate towards us. We start attracting people who are following good orderly direction. We start creating sort of a mini kingdom or a mini community that follows good orderly direction. And that helps us feel filled. When we do things that are righteous, when we clothe the naked, feed the hungry, um, help the needy. Those are things that fill our heart. It doesn't have anything to do with filling our wallet. Matter of fact, a lot of times it drains our wallet, but that's not the point. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. We are filled with a sense of compassion and contentment and love when we seek to do what is right. 
Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Those who are kind to others typically have people who are kind to them. If you judge others all the time and if you're not compassionate, then guess what? People are going to treat you the way you treat them. So those who are merciful and compassionate tend to get mercy and compassion in return. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. When we're angry, when we are filled with um, cravings and urges and our sinful natures, where we're not pure in heart, we're more pure in flesh, it's hard to see what the right thing is to do because we want to do what feels good at the moment. And the, those who are pure in heart can step back and recognize, yeah, that might feel good in the moment, but that is not what is best, not what is most prudent in the long term. Blessed are the peacemakers. They will be called sons of God. Again, there was a lot of violence. There was a lot of chaos at this point in time. And the peacemakers were the ones who sat down. And again, they're not people who are being doormats. They're ones who go in and go, all right, let's get everybody to the table and figure out how to make this work. Figure out how to respect one another. Jesus goes on later talking about how if you enter someone's house and give them kindness and they don't return kindness to you, leave, walk out and dust the, uh, shake the dust off your feet. Jesus doesn't say sit there and try to convince them to come over to your side, but he says, you know, we don't need to destroy them. We need to figure out how to live in peace. Blessed are those who are per persecuted for righteousness, righteousness sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And there are going to be people who are not following good orderly direction, who think what you're doing is foolish, who say what you're doing is wrong even. That's okay. That's their right. Um, and there are some people who may even try to persecute you when you're doing the right thing, because you know what? That scares them. And when people are afraid, they enter fight or flee. So the people who do what is right, even though not everybody's joining up, and sometimes they even get punished for it, will still feel good. They will still have the Holy Spirit. They will still be able to look themselves in the mirror and go, you know what? Okay. I can look at myself. I can be content with my behaviors. I can love myself based on what I'm doing. If I turn and I do what is unrighteous, I can't look myself in the mirror and I can't be part of this group over here. So, okay. You know, kingdom of heaven, I'll be part of your group. Kingdom of something else, you know, more power to you. Each of these kind of represents parts of the perfect mnemonic. Being poor in spirit, recognizing that we need education and knowledge is part of prudence. Grieving is part of endurance, recognize and earnestness. Recognizing that this may hurt right now, but we can get through it and we can move on. Uh, being meek often is a sign of, and the peacemakers both, often is a sign of compassion and respect for one another. Merciful is a sign of compassion. And being persecuted for righteousness's sake, I can never say that, um, that's again, that's earnestness and endurance. You're doing what is right and you're doing, doing it to the best of your ability, even when it causes you distress. So the Beatitudes kind of sum up a lot of the aspects of good orderly direction. 
If this channel helps you learn more about good orderly direction and discover ways to be more loving to yourself or others or deal with life on life's terms, please remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel.